If you have always wanted to learn how to talk about basketball in English, this is the lesson for you. You will see there are English subtitles right at the top of the screen. So if you would like, you can put the subtitles at the bottom in whatever language you are most comfortable with. Hope it's useful. Take lots of notes. Maybe watch it twice. What's going on, everyone? Hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining. I have no idea if this is going to work. In fact, I think it might not work, but we will see. So if everything goes correctly today, you will be learning about basketball, how to talk about basketball in English. But we have had some technical difficulties before we started. So the microphone is new that I am uh, using right now. Not new, different. I've had it for a while, but it's not my normal microphone. So we'll see how it goes. The first term here is arena. Arena. In case you don't know, most basketball games are played in an arena. So take a look right down there. An arena is a large building where basketball games are played. And you can see there is a picture of what looks like an arena. And in the middle of the arena is something we will talk about shortly, and that is a basketball court, a basketball court. But here's a sentence for you using arena. The basketball game tonight will be played in the big arena downtown. The basketball game tonight will be played in the big arena downtown. The next term I would like to teach you, very important, it's hard to have a basketball game without a court. That is the flat surface on which you play basketball. It's usually made of wood. So at the bottom a court is the playing area for a basketball game. And in that picture, you can see there is a basketball court. And it looks like that court is made from wood. Players must stay within the lines of the basketball court during the game. If not, they are out of bounds. If you go out of bounds with the ball, the other team gets the ball. Out of bounds. It's what we call every other place in the arena besides the court. My wife and I, Jamie, we have been watching a lot of basketball through the month of March. There have been so many games and our favorite team, the University of Alabama. That is where we both went to college. They made the final four. So they are in the final four teams who are playing for the championship. That is the first time ever that has happened. What about this one? The hoop. The hoop. Very important when it comes to basketball because that is how players score points when they're playing basketball. The ball has to go through the hoop. The hoop is the ring that players try to throw the ball through to score points. Now, I'm not talking about the rules here. They are probably too complicated for one English lesson. But most of the time, when the ball goes through the hoop, you get two points for your team. Sometimes you get one point. Sometimes you get three points. But the most common shot in basketball is a two-point shot. We will talk about three-pointers a little later. How about this sentence to help you practice your English? This sentence has the word hoop in it. He jumped high and put the ball through the hoop. He jumped high and put the ball through the hoop. 
probably scoring two points for his team. Let me interrupt for a second. If you are enjoying this English lesson, could you give it a thumbs up? And if this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe so you never miss another English lesson. Most basketball hoops have something called a net. A net. So I want to talk about two terms here, net and mesh. And I put mesh in really big letters because I thought that might be kind of hard. The net is the mesh hanging from the hoop, which helps see when a point is scored. So there are some basketball courts, maybe a local park could have a basketball court, and they might not have a net. They might not have that little mesh stuff. And it's hard to see when the ball goes through the hoop. But if it's a big game, the hoops will have a net, and then you will be able to see the ball go through the hoop. I would like to teach another term here. The ball swished through the net without touching the rim. So if a player swishes the ball, they do not touch the hoop. The ball goes right through. It might touch the mesh. It might touch the net, but it doesn't touch that ring that we call the hoop and the ball swished. Yeah, we could say the ball swished in. It hit nothing but net. You might also hear that term. There's another part of the hoop that we call the backboard. Hang on. There's the picture. I want this instead. There. That's the backboard. You can see that red arrow pointing to some something. It's the backboard. The backboard is the flat board behind the hoop that helps players make shots. So sometimes you might hear this verb, bank. So sometimes a player will bank their shot off the backboard, hoping it goes through the net so they can score two points for their team. Here is a sentence using backboard. She bounced the ball off the backboard and it went in. She bounced the ball off the backboard and it went in. You could say banked. She banked the ball off the backboard. It's another way to say like bounced. We're going to talk about dribble in a minute. Very important in the game of basketball. And that is when you bounce the ball on the court. We have a picture of a person shooting the ball. Careful. Shooting can be bad. But when we're talking about basketball, it's actually very good. So it's when a player has the ball, throws it towards the hoop, and they hope it goes through the hoop. When a player shoots the ball, they try to score points by throwing the ball into the hoop. Hopefully that will happen. The next term I would like to talk about is dribble. We have a couple dribbles in English, but when it comes to basketball, a player dribbles when they bounce the ball off the court. If a player wants to move with the ball, they have to bounce it. Yeah, so you can start dribbling, you can start moving, but once you stop dribbling, once you stop bouncing the ball on the court, you also must stop. I think you can take two more steps, maybe one step, but if not, you will get called for a travel. I don't want to talk too much about the rules, but if you want to move with the basketball, you have to dribble it, pass. This is when one player has the ball, and they give it to the other player on their team. But a pass is when another player gives the ball to their teammate. 
I asked AI over there to draw or to create an image of a basketball player passing the ball to their teammate. They never quite got it right. So I'm hoping with my definition and that picture, you understand what a pass is. If a player is dribbling the ball down the court and they stop dribbling, they need to either shoot the ball towards the hoop or they need to pass the ball to their teammate. But they cannot continue walking and they can't start dribbling again. If they do, it's called the double dribble. This is rebound. Rebound. Rebound means to catch the ball after a missed shot. So if a player shoots the ball toward the rim and it doesn't go in, it bounces off and goes back down towards the players. When a person catches it, they get a rebound. Rebounds are very important because that means your team now has the ball. They could score again on that hoop if it's an offensive rebound. We'll talk about that in a minute. But if the other team gets the ball under the hoop, it's a defensive rebound. And they will probably go towards the other side of the court where their hoop is and try to score two points, maybe three points. Okay, here we go. Offensive rebound, defensive rebound. There are offensive rebounds and defensive rebounds. Offense is when the team is trying to score. Defense is when the team is trying to stop the other team from scoring. So if you are on the offense, your team has the ball, you're trying to score. If you're on defense, your team doesn't have the ball, you are trying to stop the other team from scoring. Foul. We have a couple different fouls in English. When it comes to basketball, a foul is when a player breaks the rules, which may give the other team a free throw. We'll talk about free throw in just a minute. But anytime a player breaks the rules, it's a foul. And if you look at this picture right here, I mean, this one player is practically hugging another player. Yeah, you can't do that in basketball. You will get called for a foul. Now, in that sentence, there was something called a free throw. can get a little confusing, but at one point in the game, if a team has enough fouls, the other team will get to shoot what's called a free throw. The game stops. A player will go to the free throw line. I think I might have that later, but they get a free shot. Nobody can stop them. It's just them and the hoop, and they try to score one point for their team. A free throw is worth one point, and sometimes you can get two, point, two, two free throws. Sometimes you can get three. But again, not going over the rules, it would be way too long of a lesson. If this English lesson is popular, maybe I will do one about basketball rules. But this lesson is designed to help you talk about basketball. How about this sentence using foul? Notice the way it's spelled, foul. The player was given a foul for pushing. You can't push in basketball. You're playing football, American football. You can push. It's actually encouraged. They want you to push, but not here, not in basketball. We also have another kind of foul in English, and it has something to do with birds. So if you look at that picture, what are those things? Are those, make it a little bigger here. They could be Canadian geese. Those almost look like they are Canadian geese. And anytime I hear Canadian, I need to give a shout out to Bob the Canadian. Good Canadian fellow there. Foul, though. Foul 
F O W L is a word used to describe birds, usually ones that people keep for eggs or meat. For example, ducks. Those are called waterfowl. People hunt them. What about this? Chickens can also be called fowl. Yeah, very strange when talking about basketball and talking about birds. The farmer has many fowls in his yard, including chickens and ducks. Different kind of fowl. What about this? Coach. Coach. Now back to basketball. A basketball coach is a person who teaches players how to play basketball and helps them improve. So they are like the leader of the team. Maybe they played basketball when they were younger, but they're like a teacher of basketball. They show the players how to play basketball, how to get better. They make all of the decisions when a team is playing a game. So here is an example of a basketball coach in a sentence. The basketball coach trained her team every afternoon, teaching them new techniques and strategies. When they are not in a game and the coach is teaching, we call that practice. Technique is a special way to do something. So maybe the coach showed them a technique on how to shoot the ball better. And a strategy is like a plan. It's like how you're going to win the game might be some of the strategy. Substitute. Sometimes you might just hear sub. A substitute is a player who comes into the game to replace another player. Maybe the player that started the game, call them a starter, maybe they were getting tired, so the coach put in a substitute. They put in a sub. Here's a sentence. The coach made a substitute to bring fresh legs into the game. Fresh legs. That means somebody's legs aren't tired. They might be able to move a little bit more quickly than the starter. The starter can come back into the game. Maybe the sub came in to give the starter a rest. A couple different kinds of shots here. A layup. A layup might be the easiest shot in basketball. That is when a player is really close to the basket and they just lay the ball in. They just put the ball in. It should be pretty easy. It is embarrassing if a good basketball player misses a layup. Right at the bottom there. A layup is a close range shot made by laying the ball into the hoop. And you can see in the picture, that might help you a little bit. It's like the basketball player is going to be really close to the hoop when shooting. Now, I'm not sure what's going on with the basketball player's other arm. Doesn't look quite right, but at least AI got it pretty right. A layup is when a player is really close to the hoop. He made an easy layup after dribbling past the defender. Remember, the person who is on defense is trying to stop the other team from scoring. We might also call them the defender. The defender. This is one of the best shots in basketball, and it is a slam dunk. A slam dunk is scoring by jumping and forcefully putting the ball through the hoop. That's a very difficult shot because there are often defenders trying to stop this, but it's when a player can jump really high, as high as the hoop, and put the ball right through the hoop. We would call that a slam dunk. The crowd or the audience, the crowd is what we call the people watching the game. They usually go crazy. And when I say go crazy, that means shouting, yelling, cheering. The crowd cheered loudly 
after the player's impressive slam dunk. You can see there's an arrow pointing to a line. That line is the three-point line. So if a player makes a shot from behind that line, they don't score two points for their team. They score three points for their team. Or here's a definition for three-pointer. A three-pointer is a shot made from outside the three-point line. Scoring a three-pointer adds three points to the team's score. Now, my favorite team, the University of Alabama, they are known for taking a lot of three-pointers. And last night, at the beginning of the game, they were not hitting their three-point shots, so they started losing. Luckily, in the second half, they started making their shots. So those three-pointers started to land, and they eventually won, which was pretty cool to see. What about this sign? You might see this in basketball quite a bit. That person, probably the coach, is making a timeout sign with their hands. It almost looks like a T. So when a coach calls a timeout, that means the clock stops, the play stops, and the coach gets to talk with his or her players. So a timeout is a break in the game when the coach can talk to the players. Mostly coaches call timeouts. Sometimes a player will call a timeout when they're on the court, but most of the time it is the coach who calls the timeout. Here's a sentence using timeout. The team called a timeout to discuss their strategy. Remember earlier we said strategy was a plan? So their strategy would be a plan to win the game. I could have done this at the beginning because this is how every basketball game starts, and that is with a jump ball. And in the picture, you can see there are two players jumping high to try to get the ball. There's a person with a black and white shirt. We will talk about that person a little later. But every basketball game begins with a jump ball. And a jump ball is the way to start the game or restart it after a stop by tossing the ball into the air. So whichever team, whichever player can jump higher might be able to get the ball for their team. Here's a sentence to help you practice your English. The game started with a jump ball at center court. Remember, we talked about where the basketball game is played. It's played on a court right in the middle. It's where the jump ball happens, and it is called center court. There is something called a shot clock in basketball. Each team only has a certain amount of time in which to shoot and score, or at least touch the rim. We talked about rim earlier. A shot clock is a timer that limits how long a team can try to score. It is usually 24 seconds. So depending on how old the players are, there might be shorter shot clocks or longer, but the average is 24 seconds. So when a team gets the ball on offense, they have 24 seconds in order to score or the other team will get it. If they touch the rim with the ball, they will get another shot clock. We're going to talk about something very embarrassing right now, an air ball. An air ball. An air ball is a shot that misses the hoop and the backboard. It doesn't touch anything, and it can be pretty embarrassing. If the crowd wants to make fun of the player, if they want to make the player feel bad, you might hear the crowd say, air ball, air ball, after the player doesn't even touch the backboard or the rim. The shot was an air ball, not touching anything. 
The crowd chanted, air ball, air ball, air ball. Yeah, it can make the player feel very embarrassed. We talked about center court, right? Well, in the center of the court, there is a line, and that line is called the half court line. So half court is the middle line in the basketball court. This is crazy. I've seen it happen on TV before. She shot the ball from half court to win a million dollars. So sometimes in the middle of the basketball game, we call that halftime, right in the middle. Sometimes during halftime, a team will have a contest. Sometimes it's to win a car. Sometimes it's to win a lot of money. And they might have a half court shot where they get fans from the crowd to try to shoot the basketball through the hoop from half court. And if it happens, somebody can win something really nice. Double dribble. We talked about this earlier, but a player, in order to move with the ball, they have to dribble or bounce the ball on the court. If that player stops dribbling, stops walking, stops running, and then starts dribbling again, that is a foul. We call that a double dribble. So a double dribble is when a player is dribbling the ball, they stop, and then start to dribble again, which is not allowed. It is against the rules. We need to talk about referee here in a minute. But this sentence has referee in it. The referee called a double dribble on the player. So he or she will blow their whistle. We'll talk about whistle in a minute. Play will stop. Other team will get the ball. There's a referee. You can see that person is wearing a black and white shirt. Sometimes they are called zebras. If you know that animal in English, it looks like a horse, but it has black and white stripes. Sometimes referees are called zebras. A referee is a person who makes sure the rules are followed during the game. We often just say ref. Referee, it has three syllables. Americans are lazy, though we often say ref. The ref blew the whistle. Talk about whistle in a minute. The referee called a foul on the defender. The whistle. There is a picture of a whistle right there. A whistle is the tool referees use to stop the game or call a foul. So when you hear a referee blow their whistle, that means the clock stops and something happens. Maybe they call a foul. Here is a sentence using whistle. The game stopped when the referee blew her whistle. Congratulations. You made it to the end of a pretty long English lesson. If you're not done learning English, right up there, is an English lesson all about hot things.